my little morning ritual. I come and plug in outside City Hall, even though it says not for public use. It's closed as is the library. I go across the street and I get coffee and a bagel, egg, and cheese, and then I warm it up in the microwave. And this morning I got it, my little zebra cake. The Exxon has hot water in their sinks. Some gas stations don't. They have the paper towels, so I wash my face. They're soap, brush my teeth for some reason. <laughs> I just continually forget to brush my hair. The park where you're allowed to camp, maximum three nights, a donation is requested of $10. There was no skankiness going on while I was there, so I felt very safe. I left my bike there on a shitty little lock. I did put a rain poncho over it just to kind of, you know, deter anyone from really just seeing the bike, kind of like that idea, that's my own little thing. But if they really knew what they were doing or they really wanted my bike, a bike, they could have easily taken my bike. I liked hanging out with Victor. We had some really fantastic conversations about God, life choices, being a civilian, not being a civilian, uh, validation, all of it. It was a wonderful conversationalist. Today we are going over towards um, Kuhnusa, Kuhnusa? Pukanusa. Well, then we go into Libby, and that's where I was going to sort of connect onto the Wild West route. I did have a little spell last night in the middle of the night when I went to get up to go to the bathroom. I had a vertigo spell, and I was like, fuck. I'm thinking that just my makeup, maybe there's just something more fragile. My brain is bouncing inside of my skull a little more than the average person. I don't know. Maybe your brain starts to shrink when you get older, so there's more of a gap, a larger gap, because people are bouncing around all the time mountain biking, and you don't hear tons of stories of people getting vertigo. But I am. Although my salsa cutthroat has shock absorbers built like sort of into the seat stem and I think into the handlebars, it doesn't come close, in my opinion to, um, and now I'm just getting people waving, <laughs> waving to me. What was I saying? So it was just after two super rocky, jumpy rides, but again, I don't know if I've gone that rocky for that long. This was nonstop rocky for hours. I just think I need a bike that has specific shocks if I was gonna do this kind of riding. Anything that's causing your brain to bounce around inside your skull enough to loosen little crystals to fall into your ear canal. It's just wrong, the horrific, miserable feeling that it is. My point being, I need to stay on pavement. When we get past Libby, instead of getting on the Wild West, I'm gonna look into um, paved routes, working my way back to Boise. I mean, I love going through these towns and the people I meet. It's just that you spend a lot more money because you're stopping here and grabbing food. Well, at least I am. I have no self-control over sugar. <laughs> like my all-time favorite thing to do is stop in gas stations and get snacks. On the other side of the river from the city park is the Pacific Northwest Trail. I thought I was taking pavement, but I went into just Google map and this came up as sort of like a shortcut to go over to Lake Kukanusa. Many of you were like, yeah, no shit. But don't forget, I wasn't going around pre-planning my trip like a lot of people. So they mapped everything out. They knew how many miles, where they're probably gonna sleep. I didn't do any of that. And that's actually the way I like it. See the red line? They're calling it the Kukanai Rails to Trails. And it goes all the way over to Rexford, which is right against Lake Kukanusa. Yeah, this, I'm so excited. How beautiful this is gonna be. This was just posted yesterday. <laughs> How beautiful. We've got water on our right, train tracks on our left. I would love it if a train came by, but I never heard any um, at the city park. This is more my style versus like logging roads. I mean, it's just so intimate and beautiful and cozy. Then I drop down into open pine forest with a lot of spots to camp all on the water. And then I found this and I'm pushing my bike up, but obviously the Forest Service is great at posting the history all around. They really appreciate their area and they want to share it with you. I can freeze the frame, I'm a little far away, but there was a massive glacier. It was a mile thick. 
and it scraped away at the landscape. And then the climate changed, the glacier melted, it retreated northward, it deposited silt. And the silt became visible across the Tobacco River Bay. When the Kootenai and Tobacco Rivers reestablished their channels through these deposits, much of the silt was eroded, leaving features called hoodoos. I think that's gotta be the hoodoos right there. They are super cool. But what a beautiful area around Eureka. And then it turns into single track. And it's so soft with sand and pine. Oh my gosh. Look what we just came up over and ran into. This is Lake Kukanusa. This is just a branch of it. It has like a feeling of Lake Powell to me because of the color of the water and all the little nooks and crannies that you could take and camp out on. And this trail, look at this trail, how fantastic it is. It's 90 miles long. It's a reservoir. Boy, this is, looks like an awesome windsurfing lake. You see that down there? It just has that beautiful light, light turquoise color. The trail ends or starts, depending on which direction you're going, right here. The sandy beach. Here's Lake Kukanusa. It was seven miles from the start in Eureka to here, and it was absolutely wonderful. It's the marina. I wonder if they have boat rentals. So there's a little store in here, but here's the rentals. Water ski, water tube, they have a lot of stuff. Really good prices. They have showers here, and it's five dollars. Here's where you spit out of once you come up from the marina. A Bayance Bay in Kootenai National Forest. And now we're gonna be on the road. I wish it didn't have these rivets. Well, I mean, it's helpful <laughs> for if you're driving or getting sleepy at night, but for cycling, it sucks. I just realized, yeah, cycling south means the sun is in your face. And I've only been facing south for five minutes. And I can tell you right now, it totally sucks. The wind has been coming from the north for a month and now it's gonna come from the south. I determine your wind, just so you know. It's whatever direction I'm going in, it's against me. Nobody's around. I feel like something happened, like zombie virus hit and it wiped out everybody. I'm the only human left. This is the bridge that some guys I met at Whitefish said to take over to the west side of the lake because there's less traffic. So I just asked some women that just came over the bridge. They said they felt that it was probably quicker if I stayed on the east side of the lake. There is gonna be less up and down. So I'm gonna go with the, the women. I asked a couple that just came. They actually turned around and they're taking the east side. They said it looked kind of iffy for a bike. So I'm gonna just stick on the east side of the lake. So I literally see people biking towards me and he's like, Naomi, right? And I'm going, oh my gosh, it's the couple from- Whitefish. I cannot believe I'm running into you randomly twice now. <laughs> oh, that's like hilarious. that's crazy. Is that paved on that side, Olivia? Which one's easier? About the same. Yeah. This side is less up and down. The hills are mellower, we can. that's what I think. For the most part, yeah. Why am I biking across this bridge when I said I wasn't going to? I mean, the odds of me running into them exactly when I'm sitting there contemplating. Uh, what, what was that? <laughs> what direction to go in? It was so crazy. I say just have the dangest luck. Libby's like 70 miles. I'm not going to Libby today. Anyways, whee! They have a lot of hikes off of this road. Be a great place to come back to, just make it a backpacking trip. I'm really thirsty and this is the first creek. The road has not gotten close to the reservoir. You're always up a distance. I mean, I'm really thirsty. I'm thinking I just need to climb down there. What's this other side look like? It is so gorgeous out here. I can climb down that side. Hopefully a pickup doesn't come by and just pick my bike up and throw it in the back. Ironically, I just came back to see these signs I thought they were gonna mention when the campground is appearing, which would be helpful, although those signs never seem to exist. And it's a nature trail down to water. And now I forgot my bear spray. I hope this isn't some super windy thing that's gonna take me forever. Oh no, is it gonna be like into the forest? And I don't really like leaving my bike there. Hey, why don't I just cut through the forest? Look out, Mr. Snake. 
Look out, Mr. Pookie Bear! And whatever else I'm supposed to be looking out for here. Poisonous bushes. It's 5.30 p.m. Look how purdy. All right, I drank a liter, and then I'm taking a liter to go. So it's 25 miles to the campsite. It's gonna take me two and a half hours to get there. I'd get there at like almost eight. Maybe there's a spot before that. A spot on the reservoir. Funny, now that I'm going back, it feels different. You can uh, really dilly-dally. On my flight date out of Boise, I have three weeks, I guess, till I need to be there. And Boise, I think, is about 500 miles south. Whoa, this creek is called Big Creek. other side is in sun and that's another benefit of being on this side. I would be sweating my ass off on the sunny side right now. Look at all the color. Just gorgeous. Here we are. Wow, it just totally opened up into this big open field. Ooh, there might be some good animal viewing. It's really pretty how wild it is, right? I really thought it was gonna be with the reservoir. I just left it because the one I Googled was called McGillway, and this one is not. This one is called Barren Creek, because I was at 48 miles and the campground I Googled showed it was 50 miles, so two miles short. Yay! The other one was under dispersed camping. This is actually listed. McGillway is listed as a campground. Boat, RVs, picnic tables to the right. I guess picnic tables would be regular camping and the other with wheels is RV. I don't know. Could they just put a picture of a tent? Once again, nobody's around. Oh, area opens. Okay, so maybe this means only picnicking like day use and the other with the RV is overnight. Shit, you know what, I'm gonna turn around. I know you all think I'm an idiot. And you're like, go left, go left. But when you're new to this, you know, that's what my brain did. Because I, I don't know. Why didn't they put a picture of a tent? Damn it. <laughs> I'll figure it out. All right, ooh, I can smell campfires. We're here. So I'm going up to the tent areas. They want $16 for a tent. Oh my God, there's so many children here. Ugh, kids are everywhere. Here's camping for tents. Oh, the climb! Oh. Ooh, views! Yay! Looks like I have the pick of the litter. Oh, geez, I want water so bad. Bear thing, that's cool. Boy, they really did a beautiful job how this is dispersed. So everyone gets a, a picnic table and a, a nice cleared off area for the tent. Looks like some places there's even wood so we can't get down there i just chugged all my water it looks like it's gonna be like a slate whoa rock face oh i'm so disappointed i really am we have 90 miles of water and uh we don't get to get near it my first fire this is really nice these the fire pits are really awesome because I like that they're so protected. I feel safe making a fire. And I like the grate because like I can rest my pot up there. Yeah, this is really fantastic. And then there was some wood left. Mm -hmm. 